I'm so glad all of you are here uh, to hear from our senior warden in this series, Sharing Faith. And this, if you don't know Janet Tree Fry and her family, uh, you're missing out, really. Uh, Janet is an amazing individual with a deep faith, and I'm thankful for her ministry to this parish. I'm thankful for her ministry to me. Um, senior wardens in the church have particular um, duties to work with and support the rector, and she does it with a plum. And, and it's a gift to work with her. Uh, and also get to call her a very good friend. My children refer to her as Mary Poppins <laughs> because she's always bringing something wonderful and enticing to them and uh, uh, they light up when she and her husband, Chef Jeff, are on the scene. She was born in St. Louis, moved to Sarasota and met her husband, Jeff. Um, she became an Episcopalian, an Anglican, while living in Bermuda. And Bermuda, I think, history fact checkers, that's the <laughs> oldest extra-provincial Canterbury Diocese church uh, out in the New World. So I think the church there, it's still under, Bermuda is still under the Church of England and actually the Diocese of Canterbury. <laughs> and Janet there, I learned, um, one of the things she did, she was a customs agent. <laughs> yes. A badge and a gun, so look out. <laughs> and I think she can tell you, but I think she was pulled off of that job because they told her, quote, she was smiling too much and too nice. <laughs> uh, but I think she holds a record for like the bus, because you know, you get to talk to somebody, you disarm them, and then you really get down and get the detail. Uh, she has a wonderful family, three children, Megan, who lives in uh, New Jersey, and practices law. They just had their first granddaughter, Nora, and I had a great time getting to baptize her. Jack, who lives in Atlanta, and Mike, who's working on a degree in architecture in Winter Park. So you've come to hear Janet, not yours truly, and I'm so glad to, that you're here and for all you do, God bless you and thank you. Thank you. First off, I want to thank Ed Weber. He has continued a ministry that I started years ago when I was on the evangelism committee. He's very diligent and persistent in keeping this ministry alive. He was very persistent with me. <laughs> Little did I know that when I th the thought came to me about having people share their faith stories that I would be standing here today. God does have a sense of humor. <laughs> I prayed about what God would have me speak to, speak to you about and after many days of praying, it came to me that I should share the way the search process went and how the Holy Spirit was with us the entire way through. <clears throat> we had, uh, I have a Bible verse that I, um, that I was led to during this time. It's Isaiah 11:2, And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him the spirit of wisdom and understanding, and the spirit of counsel, and the might and the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. The search process has 14 steps to follow. And the, di the diocesis, they do not want you to skip any one of them. <laughs> All 14 need to be done. So our first step was for our, ju our junior warden and myself, Doug Spangler, we went to see the bishop. So we went up to the bishop and said to him, what are we going to do now? And he said he was very resistant and, and insistent that Doug and I were good to run, the re, re, run Redeemer. Did I mention that when the rector leaves, the senior warden is actually in charge of the church <laughs> until the bishop assigns an interim priest or a priest in charge? He gave us his cell phone number and assured us that if and when we called him, he would always answer. He sent us on our way and asked us to go back and interview our staff. I did not know I had a staff, but then I only have a staff. <laughs> so we went back and we interviewed the staff and um, just to kind of see where everyone was and the pulse of the church. We were told, continue on your path. 
the vestry met and voted that we would become the search committee. We figured that we had representation from all, all of the services and you had elected us to serve you. We had a day retreat led by Father Strom. We asked him to be our spiritual director and keep us focused on the Holy Spirit. Our retreat was very powerful and faithful. Doug and Jan Spangler wrote a prayer for all of us so that we could all be praying the same prayer daily. Let me share it with you. Prayer for the future of Redeemer. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we praise you and thank you for our Church of the Redeemer that you so clearly have skillfully created, faithfully maintained, and abundantly blessed from its beginning. We thank you for providing solid, faithful clergy throughout its history, and we thank you for raising up strong and active laity in her leadership. We thank you for the palpable presence of your Holy Spirit at Redeemer. It is our prayer, Lord, that all of our actions and decisions are within your will for our church family, both for those now and for those that will worship here in the future. Lead, guide, and direct us into your, into your word, your teaching, your sacraments, and your service. Pour out your spirit upon us, granting us stronger measure of faith and an even deeper desire to minister to your people and make disciples. Grant us strength and courage to ward off attacks from the enemy. Show us where we might fall or slip and help us to stand strong together, united in your love. And we beg you, Father God, send us to the, per the person you want to lead us in our continuing commitment to your service for years to come. Give us eyes, ears, and a heart to know who you would choose and the will to agree. Remove any obstacles that arise, we pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. This is the prayer the committee prayed again and again during the, progress, the process. <laughs> Meanwhile, Doug and I were determined to get Bishop Smith to assign us a priest in charge. We kept reinforcing that we felt a church the size of Redeemer should not be led by lay people. He would continue to tell us, you're doing a great job, keep it up, call me if you need me. After four long months, Bishop Smith agreed to assign Father Wilson as priest in charge. Yay, what a relief. <laughs> in the background, our committee had been working through the steps to continue the search. We developed our own survey. The diocesan survey was 30 pages long. We looked at it and we thought, mm, I don't think Redeemer's going to do a 30-page survey. <laughs> we want their input. We want their information. So we reached out to Stephanie Kempton, and she was very helpful in suggesting our survey. And it was well received as we received 675 responses, which we felt very strong about. So we felt like we had a really good idea of what the parish wanted for their next director. The top six areas that the parishioners that you chose in order of importance were number one, integrity, number two, effective preacher, number three, a good communicator, number four, accessible to all parishioners, number five, pastoral care, and number six, committed to youth ministry and youth programs. Our next step was to develop marketing materials to post the position we had and the needs for our congregation. We had to make a parish profile and an Office of Transition Ministry portfolio. Does that sound like diocesan <laughs> things? <laughs> Thankfully, we are blessed with wonderful and talented staff here at Redeemer. And with Jackie Bodecker's help, we were able to put that together in record speed. We used both of these documents to publish through multiple national and regional search sites to develop a list of viable candidates for the job. The next step was to put together a clergy compensation package for the prospective candidates. Clergy compensation is a complex issue, needless to say, mostly due to the unique, the unique status that clergy has with the IRS tax code. I am thankful for our wonderful treasurer, Dora Thomas, 
and our business manager, John Walsworth. Of course, right in the middle of our search process, COVID shut down the church and all of our lives. But the wonder of God and Redeemer is that as soon as we closed our doors, our clergy and staff were already on the best and safest path to get our red doors back open. The vestry immediately invested in extra cameras for filming and halo systems for safety. The office staff reached out by phone to all the members of the church, checking for needs and anything that anybody might want. We did drive-bys where the people could get out of their house and drive by and we'd hand them a puzzle or a little gift to just say we cared. And while we're speaking of COVID, it also really changed the way of our search. We all went to the internet. We had the best researchers on the search committee. We all watched many sermons, read through websites, visited Facebook accounts. We reviewed financial reports from um, candidates that where they were coming from. We were busy preparing our interview questions and prepping for interviews, the whole time listening to the Holy Spirit. Zoom became our new best friend. It was a wonderful tool to keep all of us connected and to be able to tape our conversations and interviews of the candidates. Our vestry and search committee are so dedicated. Not one of the 12 of us ever missed a search committee meeting. We developed a book with all the candidates, resumes, profiles, answers to our questions. We studied each one thoroughly. We were blessed with some top quality candidates and very faith-filled people. We narrowed the, narrowed the group down and continued to share with them our needs at Redeemer. The Holy Spirit was there again. When we are down to the last five candidates, we decided we needed to meet in person. It was apparent that we needed to all be in the same room. We needed to be face to face. And again, we called on Father Strong to start our meeting for us and help us to call the Holy Spirit. It was very important for us to bring the Holy Spirit in and make sure we were listening to God and his plan for the Church of the Redeemer. It was in that meeting that the Holy Spirit came alive in this room. One of us shared that after all we had researched, that he felt Father Wilson was the candidate for the job that God was calling to us. Our task at hand was narrowing down our group a bit more, but as more people talked and explained their feelings, it was unanimous that everyone in the room was feeling the same way. We had followed all the rules and we were so close, but we were not done. I told the group, the only thing that I can think that we could do is we need to have a group call with the bishop. I don't know what else to do at this point. I asked if we, I called the bishop and asked him if we could do a Zoom call with him that night. He wanted to know what it was about, but I told him we needed to speak with him as a group. He was a bit concerned as to, <laughs> to what we might be saying, but he agreed to it and said yes. Once again, the Holy Spirit was there. On our Zoom call with Bishop Smith, I told him that we had met and it was a unanimous decision that Father Charleston be asked to be our next rector. He asked us all individually some very hard questions and was talking to us as a group together. And all of a sudden, we were talking and he says, yes. And I said, yes, what? <laughs> he said, you have done your work, and you have answered my questions, and you convinced me that Father Charleston is the right person to call. We were all so surprised. I think our jaws were all open on the Zoom call. <laughs> and I asked, well, okay, now, now what? Now what's our next step? And he said, ask Father Charleston to be your next director. <laughs> I figured there had to be another few steps. <laughs> I immediately texted Father Charleston to see if we could do a Zoom call at 8 o'clock that night. He was, like the bishop, a little resistant, <laughs> not having known what, he want, what we wanted. And he was very much out of, the, out of the clue, like he had no idea that it would have been that. He was not happy with me. 
I just kept telling him, trust me, trust me. <laughs> we had an amazing meeting with all of us, and there was so much excitement and tears of happiness. God is so good. I felt like I needed to share this journey with you. Just like all the other areas of Church of Redeemer, your board is very faithful and cares very much about our future. I wish to thank the vestry for all of its work and prayers. I will miss this group as I go off the vestry in January. I have been blessed to share this experience with them and will hold every one of them in my heart. I thank Father Charleston for saying yes to his call. The Church of the Redeemer is strong and faith-filled. Let us follow our tagline to make new Christians and make all Christians new so we can grow together. God knows our plan. We just need to listen.